My name is Terry Bush. I work for a government agency called DIA. And this story is about how we took a, some map data, we made a few trillion pixels, and then something really kind of neat happened once we did that. This is where I was. I had a big enterprise GIS, just like you did, and it was heavy, complicated, expensive. <laughs> Oracle DBAs who never did anything. Running around, lots of wires, and it sucked, and I was responsible for it. And then I discovered open source, thanks to many of you, and I fell for it. In fact, I'm a junkie. Uh, what I got out of it more than anything, lightweight, fast, interoperable, interoperable cheap, because I'm poor, and it was faster. Inside of, dub, inside of uh, all that stuff was tile cache. I love tile cache. I like the little client uh, caching that we were doing. I got fast maps. Remember, I'm on a private network. I never had fast maps. Again, that's my fault. But could we do it on the server? Well, it seemed a panacea. Let's write scripts, write server-side tile cache, do everything. We, we never got to the tipping point with any of the technology that I paid millions of dollars for. And finally, I had something that was free, cheap. I just had to run it on the server. So what if we did this? I cached the entire world. Every map data set global one that I could find and get my hands on. Didn't matter who it was. I was in cache the whole thing. It's just disk after all. Disk is cheap. It gets cheaper every year. The IT guys will give me disk. Pretty much nothing else. But there was a problem. Scripting for caches was kind of slow. For our data sets, we calculated on our servers, it would take about two years to do what I wanted to do. Darn it, you contractors. Come on. Come through for me. But then we found Amazon in EC2, and this is all free, you know, sort of unclassified data. So instead of a few servers, what if we tile cached on a few thousand servers? Amazon's actually pretty cheap to use. I was pretty excited by my plan. So we took that two years of core processing and ran it in about 24 hours. Uh, three terabytes of raw data converted about 30 terabytes of tile cache, which was a lot, but we did it. 18 zoom layers, the world is done. No one Mississippi, two Mississippi maps. They ended up with about two trillion, trixel, two trillion pixels to begin with. We have many more than that. At one point we surged, this is the fun numbers, 5,000 servers. We can scale this. Time doesn't matter. Two, mi two million pixels per second, eight million. It doesn't matter. We could do 50. It's just a number of servers we, we harness. So now I've got rid of all my wires and databases and junk, and now I've got it lightweight, and it's just disk. I've got lots of people who use it. I promise you we're on these private networks and I stopped spending all my money on hardware. So what else did I get? I got scalable, I got portable. People wanted me to copy this stuff for them. I couldn't believe they wanted another copy. Updatable, I just recache, I do this all the time. Version proof, very important to me because I'm poor. Uh, so I had this really neat, tidy database, but it wasn't necessarily error free. There were warts here. We had to write error handling as we did this. We had to do it on the fly. Why, we, why our hands were in EC2? This was good guys in the room to help do this and the bandwidth problem. There's not enough bandwidth to move that kind of data. <laughs> so, while I was there, I had another light bulb go off. What if we try to solve some of our other problems? What if we try to save our GIS guys some time? What if we created the app ready surfaces for our GIS guys, right? So what if we just said, I've got elevation data, why don't I go ahead and make slope, aspect, hill shade, terrain recognition, or elevation, all those layers that I spent all that time calculating, and I did it for the whole world. I'm already sitting on the EC2 with all my elevation data. These are simple 10 lines of code things to, that we can run. So we did it, and we saved people time. You don't push the slope button and watch the status bar anymore and go get coffee. Saving a lot on coffee. We prepared ourselves for the GIS geoprocessing world that I keep being promised is right around the corner, and I just found out it's coming on Monday. Um, so I was really excited here. We are letting our surgeons be surgeons. Our geographers are actively doing geography. And so we're really, really happy because I actively can say that not only did I remove the junk, I saved time. A word about how we did it, there was a lot of technology, a lot of people involved. We, have, we came up also with a distributed GIS or a cloud-based GIS. We took the good old tools, we took some Hadoop, we mashed it together. There's a guy I'll mention at the end who'll tell you all about it. It's somewhat open source. This was all in 2009. We're moving forward from here. Again, I'm poor, so I can't move forward as fastly, but to, uh, I'm glad to see as we picked up the change detection, we're doing some other fun social media kind of stuff. But I'm looking for ideas, so come up and talk to me, tell me what you think. These are the guys I talk to, not me. Buy these guys a beer. I left Travis Penny and Jeff Johnson out of this. I'm sorry, guys. Smart guys you need to talk to about any of the stuff you just saw in my briefing. Unless you want my opinion, I'm always happy to give that to you for free. Thank you very much. <laughs>